Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today is Overreaction Monday, and all I'm going to say is buckle up, because today's show is going to be a doozy. But I wouldn't be able to do today's show if it wasn't for our awesome sponsor, LinkedIn Talent Solutions. If you run a small business, finding the right people is essential to make sure that that business grows. Look at Chat Sports. We are finding the right people. Maybe Mark Davis needs to find the right person to run this Raiders organization. But hey, go to LinkedIn.com slash NFL Daily to make sure that you guys can find the right candidates faster. Post your job for free. That link's going to be available for you guys in the comments and in the description of today's video. So what we're going to be doing here is I have the three biggest overreactions after the Raiders 29-23 to collapse against the Arizona Cardinals. I told you all yesterday, I'm going to be hot takey. This show is going to be spicy, a lot spicier than maybe even the one chip challenge. But you know what? I do this show for the nation. I woke up a little bit hungover. Major shout out to all of you. And probably the top story that I'm going to talk about here is this. Josh McDaniels is on the hot seat. Guess what? I am giving it four just win babies. I don't think it's an overreaction whatsoever but Mitch it's only been two games you're right but you're 0-2 and I talked to a lot of Raider fans out there there was more anticipation more hype more of just the idea that this was going to be the Raiders year you are 0-2 after blowing a 20 to nothing lead you were up 20 nothing going into half and somehow the Raiders lost that game. Since 1990, teams who start 0-2 have an 11% chance of making the playoffs. McDaniels is 0-2 as a Raiders head coach. He is now 11-19 as a head coach in general. The last time he failed was also in the AFC West. So I'm telling you right now, I think that the hot seat is getting hot. Bo, I want to know from you though, that's what the Raiders report is about. I've seen a lot of emotion. I woke up mad, and I hate waking up mad because I love my job and I love what I do, but I woke up so frustrated yesterday, and I want you to be honest with me because there's going to be people that disagree with this take. That's fine. I like disagreements. How hot is Josh McDaniel's seat right now? Scale it from 0 to 10. 0, you don't think it's hot whatsoever. 10, it is blazing, blazing hot. For me, I think this is a Billy Bob 10 on the hot scale. That's what I think. If you don't know that movie reference, that's on you. I was going to show a picture, but every picture had the F word in it. I kind of still wanted to be able to do it because I dropped a few F bombs yesterday. That's not something that I do. That's how upset I was, and I know that's how upset a lot of Raider fans are. Even though I'm saying it's a 10, even though I'm saying right now that Josh McDaniels is on the hot seat, I'm also very confident in saying that I don't think Mark Davis fires McDaniels. I don't think that Dave Ziegler gets the boot either. In fact, when you look at the way that they structured a lot of contracts, I would say they got three years. When you look at a lot of the deals, Darren Waller extension, Derek Carr's contract, Devontae Adams' deal, Hunter Renfer, they structured contracts in that way. So to me, it's going to be Josh McDaniels. It's going to be Dave Ziegler for the next three years. However, with that being said, I know McDaniels, is going to feel the heat from Raider Nation. I know he's going to feel it from the media. In that post-game press conference yesterday, he looked defeated already. The, a, lot of, a lot of the things that we talked about in terms of, I don't know if McDaniels has the backbone to be able to run an NFL organization. Some of those worries, from what I saw yesterday, they are definitely, definitely warranted. Now remember y'all, LinkedIn Talent Solutions is an amazing place where you guys can post your job for free. Do it at the link that you see below, linkedin.com slash NFL Daily. Even if you're worried about hiring the wrong people, that's not going to happen with LinkedIn. Get your jobs in front of the right people. I promise you it's a very simple and easy process to do it. All you got to do they got like simple tools like screening questions. It makes it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL Daily. I'm going to say it again. That's linkedin.com slash NFL Daily to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I mean, we got to be able to face the facts here. When the Raiders hired McDaniels, we were all excited. Well, 
I guess I should say we all. There was people out there that were excited. I was a little bit reserved because I knew McDaniels' past, how he struggled to be a head coach, how not a lot of players respected him because of what he did to Indianapolis and a lot of people in those organizations as well. And after this 0-2 start and collapse, I'm worried, man. I am legitimately worried about Josh McDaniels. Let's go to the next overreaction on today's show. This is going to be Derek Carr's final season with the Las Vegas Raiders. I laugh because I have said it's Derek Carr's prove it year probably for three years in a row since I've been doing this show. I'm going to give this one two just win babies. and I'm going to say it's a 50-50 shot. It's a 50-50 shot at this current moment that this is going to be Derek Carr's last season. If the Raiders miss the playoffs, it's time to move on. Face the facts. I know he signed his new deal. You can still get out of that new deal, though. Oh, but Mitch, he's got a no-trade clause in his contract. You could still figure out a way to potentially move on from Derek Carr because here's the thing. Deshaun Watson had a no-trade clause. Russell Wilson had a no-trade clause. Both of those guys got traded. You can get around it. And if a team's willing to pay Derek Carr millions of dollars, you could say what you want. DC can say what he wants. I don't think that he's going to turn down millions of dollars to still play football. Now, here's the other thing. The Raiders, you have three days after the Super Bowl to move on from DC. Do I think cutting Carr makes a lot of sense? No, but it saves you a lot of sense. It saves you actually $110.68 million. When the Raiders gave Carr his contract, I sat up here and I said, this is a great deal for the Raiders. And if Carr can get it done, it then becomes a very good deal for DC. But look at the contract itself. You have to face the facts that he can move on and you could save $110 million. The other reason why I'm going to say this is because if you follow the Raiders and you go back and you look at his last eight regular season games, you got a quarterback who's averaging 242.1 passing yards per game. In eight games, 10 passing touchdowns, eight interceptions. He's put the ball on the ground seven times, and he's lost three of those. So you're telling me you're going to pay a quarterback $40 million a year to put up these numbers? No, of course you're not. But when Carr signed his extension... This is how you can break it down. Nothing's guaranteed after this season. That's kind of crazy to me. I'm surprised that DC decided to go with that deal, but he entrusted himself. He bet on himself, especially when you have the amount of talent that the Raiders do on this team. But look at it. In 2023, he's going to make 34.88. 2024, 43. 2025, 43. If Derek can play the way that I've seen Derek Carr play, if he can play the way that he did in that first half, against Arizona, this is a steal for Derek Carr. You're like, wait, that's a steal? In another year, two, three years? Bad quarterback's going to be making this type of money right here. And then, again, since there isn't any guarantees, this is how much money you would be able to save if cut. In 2023, you would save $29.25 million. I wouldn't mind investing that $30 million and potentially some other pieces. Who knows? But overall, the, the entire contract, you save 110.68. Let's say, all right, they're going to roll them out there one more year in 2023. You want to draft a quarterback, but hey, we still want to have Derek Carr. Cool. You can then move on from him in 2024 and save 81, 2025 and save 41.3. Here's my other take on this whole situation. If I'm Josh McDaniels and if the Raiders don't make the playoffs this season, he's going to be on the hot seat and he knows his quarterback's going to be on the hot seat. And I've seen Josh McDaniels do some pretty, I'll say, lame things in the past. Go ask a lot of Colts fans and people in that Colts organization. If McDaniels wants to save his job, I believe he would go to Mark Davis and say, let me draft my own quarterback. I tried it this way. I gave a deal to Carr. He couldn't get it done with me. Let me draft my own quarterback because what does that do? That saves his ass. That saves him to then have another year as the Raiders head coach. Because right now, if the Raiders miss the playoffs, if I'm Mark Davis, me as a Raiders report host, me as a fan of Raider Nation, if you miss the playoffs with this team and this offense, somebody's got to go. It's either Derek, see ya, or it's Josh McDaniels, see ya. Because there's no argument you can make to me that says, hey, let's bring both of these guys back. It doesn't make sense. So who would you keep? Let's say, and God, I do not want it to happen. There is still a 11% chance. It's not a lot of hope, but there is a little bit of hope in there that the Raiders can make the playoffs. Who would you keep? Would you keep Josh McDaniels, type JM? Or would you keep DC? If you want to keep both, that's fine. 
but I do not think that that world exists. I don't think it exists if you make the playoffs, especially if you're bad. Like, if you win six, five games, that, that world definitely doesn't exist then. So who would you keep, JM or DC? I can't wait to see the answers on this question. Let's go to the next overreaction here on the Raiders Report on this Monday show. Blame the defense. Blame Patrick Graham's defense for the loss. They gave up 23 points in the second half and couldn't stop anything. Stop it. This is an overreaction at its absolute finest, man. Did the defense not play well and not make adjustments in the second half? Sure. But you're telling me right now in the National Football League, okay, you're going to give up 23 points in a game and you're not going to be able to win it with the amount of money, the amount of resources, the amount of draft capital you gave up this offseason to make the offense that you did. On top of that, the defense was gassed in the second half. You know why? Because <laughs> the offense couldn't do anything. It was three and outs, nothing sustained drives. You put up three points in the second half. That defense, which already was shorthanded because you don't have Anthony Everett. You don't have Denzel Perriman. Bilal Nichols ended up getting hurt, which we'll talk about here in a second. There were multiple injuries already. Trevon Merrick, your, your defense was gassed because your offense couldn't sustain drives, and they were already injured. You were minus three starters. So anybody sitting up here say you're going to blame the defense. If you can't win in the NFL with this offense, giving up 23 points a game, you're telling me you don't think the Raiders can put up 23 points a game? I mean, right now they haven't. That's pretty bad, man. And the defense against Arizona, total yards, 413. Passing yards, 270. They struggle to stop the run. Kyler really carved them up. And then another reason why, can we just go get a freaking defensive tackle already or somebody that can really stop the interior run game? It's almost like this has been a problem for a year and a half with the silver and black. They carved us up on the running game, which then opened up a lot of other things for the passing game. Imagine the Arizona Cardinals if they would have had DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore. Andy Isabella like that offense wasn't even close to 100% and they still were able to win this freaking game the Raiders forced a turnover shout out to Amik Robertson the sack came from Max Crosby I'm still waiting for Chandler Jones to make his money worth it because I have yet to see very much out of that man right there coming up next here on the Raiders report we're gonna look at some injury news and there's really two big injuries that we're gonna hit on and some of the guys that didn't play this past week uh, Matthew Butler and Neil Farrell Jr., they aren't injured. They were just listed as inactive. I thought that was a little bit of a surprise there. But that also goes back to some of the reports that I was telling you all for months that the Raiders are kind of worried about those two DTs. On top of that, obviously Andre James still dealing with a concussion. We'll see what happens with Denzel Perriman this upcoming week. Trevon Merrigan, that hip injury, fingers crossed. But the two injuries that happened from this past week's game against Arizona, the first one's Hunter Renfro. On the play where Renfro fumbled, it was recovered by Byron Murphy for a 59-yard fumble recovery. He got hit in the head. He got knocked. Hey, he got hit pretty freaking hard, man. Fumbled the football, but now he's in concussion protocol. He's in concussion protocol, and in the NFL, you saw it with Andre James last week. It's not an easy thing to get out of. I believe the Raiders are going to be cautious. We'll see if Renfro is going to be out there upcoming this upcoming week against Tennessee in a must-win situation situation another injury news keep up here is Bilal Nichols I have been impressed when Nichols has been on the field he has looked good to me however he had a torn meniscus in the offseason and now he's injured his shoulder this will be another injury that we absolutely will try to do our best to keep you guys up to date on all right y'all I'm getting ready to head out of here I know hot spicy overreaction Monday shows, but that's what it's about here. I'm a passionate fan. I'm a passionate person, and I know how much time, effort, money Raider Nation gives up for this team, and just point blank, ma'am, that was a spineless, spineless game by every single one of those dudes that put on that jersey. Al Davis was turning in his grave yesterday. I know you guys care a lot. I want to see better. I believe the Raiders will play better. Raider Nation deserves better. And if you made it this far in this video after that game yesterday, that tells me that you care, and that tells me that you're a real one. So spam real one for life in the comments section. I'll see you all tomorrow for our Tuesday live show. Remember, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific, unless breaking news happens, but that's just another reason to hit that subscribe button.